Welcome to episode 5 of the AFA Gen X podcast. My name is Ashley Mahadia, the New South Wales Chair for the Gen X Community of Practice and your host for this episode. A big thank you to the AFA for allowing us to host this podcast and to our supporting partner, Advice Intelligence, for powering this episode. The aim of episode 5 is to showcase the importance of the different roles in financial advice and how they contribute to the provision of quality financial advice. We speak to Mark Stubbings, Stubbo, Business Development Professional at Aware Super, Jade Cow, Practice Manager at ANZ, and Kamel Saxena, Business Owner and Strategic Power Planner at Plans of Distinction. Jade, Kamel and Mark, welcome to the AFA Gen X podcast. Thank you for having us, Ash. Thanks, Ash. Hi, Ash. How are you doing? Good. Hope you're all doing well. Let's get right into it. Um, the purpose of this episode is to uh, showcase the importance of the different roles in financial advice. And um, I'd like to ask first, uh, what attracted you to your role in financial planning? Thanks, Ash. And look, probably fair to say that I've been in the industry a long time, but I've always had such a strong and abiding belief in financial advice. I think over my career, I've seen examples of where financial advice have seen has seen consumers through to you know, confidence and, and, and literally a happy ending, right? As opposed to circumstances where people haven't received advice or guidance. And, and I've seen the, you know, the uh, the terrible consequences uh, at either the end of their uh, working career or if, if disaster has interceded in the meantime. So I have a great belief in financial advice and its role for good in the community, yeah? I think allied with that, and there's probably another couple of things, is that I obviously firmly believe as a consequence that the more people who get advice, the better. Fantastic. So I can I can do something about that in my role, yeah? And thirdly, I guess what I do, which is promptly a business development role, great gives me a great opportunity to champion financial advice and to obviously support the financial advice story throughout the, the, the broader Australian community, Ash. Yeah. Yeah, I I've been an I've been an advisor for you know more than a decade, and I I, I really like my role because I get to lead a really great team of advisors and really see them develop and grow and help them with their development, and you know looking at how we biz- develop the business and and you know take it forward and really help more Australians with um, bringing advice to them. So. That's what I really love. Um, I have a deep um, sense of satisfaction knowing that the work I do is helping um, Australians uh, secure the financial future. Um, I love the variety that my role brings as well. No two client is the same. So you're constantly learning. You're constantly um, learning new strategies, financial models to help clients um, achieve their financial goals. And as a strategic power planner, what do you do on a daily basis? So I actually, um, so financial planners outsource their statement of advice to me to write. So um, initially, I would actually do the financial modelling to try and help the advisor determine whether the strategy that they've put together is going to work for them, how it's going to help them, where the benefits are going to come from and then what I do is I report back to the advisor to let them know the outcomes of the modeling and then from there we finalize the strategy and prepare the statement of advice so it's a lot of back and forth between the advisor and myself to determine the best strategy for the client yeah it's um I I much like Pamela there's such variety in my role I, I think all practices are unique and they need different things and I look at my the things that I do on a daily basis. They're so varied. Um, it ranges from developing my team, uh, attending strategy workshops, um, investment committee, working groups on projects and risk forums and incident reporting. Uh, 
going to evaluating the numbers of the business and looking at where can I get more efficiencies and you know spending time building refer, building relationships with key referral partners um uh, the list goes on actually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the as I mentioned uh, just at the beginning there ash my role is very is a business development role obviously with an industry fund where super and principally my role revolves around working with the IFA market and what am I doing in that role? I guess I'm promoting uh, Aware Super as a credible, uh, reputable and a reliable superannuation investment and insurance solution uh, for IFA clients. How that sort of plays out in practice is that I'm engaging with dealer groups, advisors and other participants in the IFA space to, to tell the Aware story, yeah? So that occupies a big chunk of my time, but it is very much translating that aware story through into a, a, a credible proposition for the IFA space, Ash. Kamel, what steps did you take to get to where you are now? So I think I took um, many incremental steps to get where I am, to get here, I guess. Um, so after leaving uni, I actually had my first job as a redemptions officer at CBA, where I worked with many different financial planners. And that's where I started to get um, curious about the role as a financial planner. And I started my DFP. Um, And following my DFP, I did the advanced diploma financial planning. And um, so I was qualified, but in experience. And my first role was with ANZ as a power planner. And after um, leaving ANZ as a power plan, I moved to MLC and worked in their 360 power planning team. And then um, after that, I moved to Mercer, where I um, started off as a power planner and then moved into a financial advisor role. So I worked in, um, with Mercer for about six years as a financial advisor. And then um, due to life reasons starting a family I decided to leave um, the corporate world and start my own business as an outsourced power planner. Wow that was uh, you sort of think about that uh, Kamal that you sort of go how can I make life hard for myself (laughs) I'll have a family and start a business what could possibly go wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah that's true (laughs) it was challenging. (laughs) Sorry mate. Mark, I'd love to hear your story of how uh, you became a BDM or a business development professional. Sure. But uh, it's, and, and look, I'm not going to bore you with the whole story because I've been in the industry for 36 <laughs> years, all right? And you sort of go, oh gosh, that's a long time. And of course, the industry was very different 36 years ago as you, as compared to now. So in, in some, sometimes I sit back with a, preferably a glass of red wine and sort of reflect on what's happened during those 36 years. But as I say, I won't bore you with that. But probably the last six years are probably the most relevant, I think, to the conversation here without going through all the uh, uh, bits. But the first five years of, of the last six years, I've spent at Sun Super and pretty much designed and rolled out Sun Super's pr- proposition for IFAs. So Sun Super was pretty much a standing start, hadn't dealt with IFA. So I put together that, built the team, and rolled that out into the IFA, IFA space. And I think it'd be fair to say that probably from the IFA space and from Sun Super space, they'd both give it a, a, a pretty good tick. I joined Aware Super literally about a year ago now to pretty much do the same thing. So I'm literally working uh, with AWARE, putting together that proposition for the IFA space, taking it out to the IFA market and, market and obviously trying to get some traction there, Ash. Jade, so tell us more um, about how you become a practice manager. Oh, it's been a long journey over the last 20 years. I'm not sure how much I should to talk about, but I I did start in administration, so like a client service officer, and then moved on to being a power planner um, and more into tech services before I joined Mercer. 
um, as an advisor. And uh, that's where I met Kamel, actually. <laughs> and, uh, and I've been an advisor for quite some time after that, um, various organizations like CBA and Unisuper. And, and um, ultimately decided I, I really uh, enjoy mentoring uh, other advisors and really contributing to them and uh, and sought to move into a people leader role, which is, um, and I really love what I do at the moment. So it's been wonderful. That's good to hear. And what value do you think your role brings to the whole financial advice ecosystem? Um, I think power planners actually play critical roles in two things. Um, one is delivering a financial plan to a client that they understand and they get excited about because it's going to help them improve their financial well-being. And I also think that they're crucial in ensuring those financial plans are compliant, especially in the industry um, today. Um, we've got to ensure that every document is in the client's best interest and we help the advisor along the way in, in, in that process as well. And I think the interestingly, sitting within an industry fund, it's fascinating to watch that sort of traditional sort of conflict between industry fund land and retail fund land, right? And there's a lot of myths and misconceptions that, that probably occupy both spaces. So I think what, what, what sort of absorbs a lot of my time is actually connecting that IFA market to credible and reputable product solutions in the industry fund sector, which is what we think we offer with AWARE. Um, it's also to actually deal with some of those misconception myths and so to go, let's talk this through. This is might be what you think, but here's the actual reality and go through the component parts of that. Uh, and a lot of it is around explaining to practices, dealer groups, practices in respect to their clients, actually explaining the role and the value that an industry fund can actually add to the practice and more importantly, the client affairs act. Yeah. Jade? Yeah, I think my role it really brings a wide lens view to the business because when you're in the business and you're in the thick of it, you you may not see beyond what's in front of you because that's perhaps the way things have always been. And so to just really be able to step back and, and look at different look at it from a different perspective and offer uh, uh, different solutions and, and ideas um, is to the way the business runs and also then to how the, the solutions that come out of that for, for clients is I think that's where the value comes from with my role. What do you love the most about financial planning? We'll start with Mark. Look, really good question, Ash. That's, that was a great question because I think, as I mentioned to you guys before we started recording, um, we've been successful in Queensland in putting together a Christmas event, which has been supported by five of the professional associations that sit in financial services. So we've managed to uh, achieve a combined event between the AFA, the FPA, MDRT, SMSFA, and XY advisor, and you sort of go, that's fantastic. But I think it, again, reflects some of those key elements, the, the bits that you love about financial planning. That first of all, it's a profession that is very people-oriented. You know, if you go back to the relationship that an advisor has with their clients, right, it's very trust and like-driven, so it's very people-oriented. I think that also goes up to the next level as well. It sort of reflects the relationship that an advisor has with their power planner or their business development manager or other service or product providers within the industry. It tends to be a very relationship driven thing. So it's a people oriented industry. It's full of passionate and engaged people. You know, I think, you know, herding the five professional associations. There's some very passionate and engaged people that have helped towards bringing that event that I mentioned together. I think the other element is, and, and you know, 
in spite of the fact the industry has been accused of not on occasion being client-centric. I, I totally refute that. I think the industry has been very customer-focused, very client-focused, and has always had the client's best interest at the centre of what they do. It's really hard to run a good business if you don't have those client best interests at the, at, the, at the forefront. I think the other thing I really love is I'm just watching, and it's challenging, right? But it is actually working through that challenge, but also the satisfaction of seeing our, and, and I've used the word profession a lot, but it's seeing our industry literally transition into a profession. I think that's very, very satisfying, Ash. Look, I, 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 from, I'd echo what Mark has said, and um, I love that no matter how many changes and, and challenges that we've had to be to go through for the last 20 years that I've been in the industry, that, you know, the people left standing are so resilient and, and they care so much for, for the clients and, and that we continue to persevere and, and to serve our clients because we have a deep and unwavering belief that we do make a difference to them. And um, so such great people that come together and, 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 and band together and, and make a difference to our clients. Well said, Jane. Yeah, I would have to agree with both Mark and Jade as well. I think it's also, you know, that you feel really proud that we're making a big difference in the financial well-being of a lot of Australians. You get a deep sense of satisfaction with that but I also think that because it's constantly changing it never allows me to get bored you're always learning so that's a great thing about financial planning as well mm, so true and I'd like to spend a bit more time on the final question because I think it would make a huge difference to new advisors existing advisors in their practices uh, what is the one thing that you would recommend that every single practice should implement? Thanks, Ash. And um, strangely enough, I promised that I did say a little bit earlier that I wouldn't bore you too much with my history, right, which is a long history. But fascinating to think back 36 years ago that there was an, an old saying in the industry, which was, very much a life insurance industry at that point. Whenever the question was asked around, so who's the ideal client? Uh, the answer was anyone who had a heartbeat, right? And I think we've moved a long way beyond that now, but interesting to reflect on the view. So I think if I had to give one bit of advice to a practice that I, that I hope the practice was find valuable, I'd actually centre it around being, firstly, very clear about the type of client they serve, right? So having a good focus on the type and style of client that they serve. Secondly, and that uh, drops down from that, stick to that profile, don't waver. Because I think I've talked to a number of businesses that have said, look, we, we got a bit distracted and we wavered away from the you know, the, the profile of client that we really wanted to serve. And we ended up with a whole lot of relationships that weren't really satisfactory from either client's point of view or the practice's point of view. So I think that's the second part. So be very clear about the client you serve. Secondly, stick to that profile. But in the context of that, spend the time and effort to design a very clear, concise and compelling story for the segment that you serve. I think we can get a little bit complicated around our messages and I think it actually serves us really really well to have a nice clear concise and compelling story uh, for the client that we want to serve and once you know that tell it far and wide tell it to everyone tell it to your networks tell it to your community tell it to your clients because your clients will be some of the best advocates for you in terms of putting you in contact with the right type of People. So that's my uh, uh, little bit of advice. Ash is be very clear about the client you serve and all the pieces that run off that. So stick to it, design a good story, and tell the story far and wide. Ash, yeah. Nice one, Stabo. 
Um, I think my one piece of advice to um, businesses is to really invest as much time and effort in back office process optimization as they do on marketing the face of the business. I think um, discipline, repeatable, efficient processes are vital to the success of most financial planning businesses and um, businesses that have inefficient processes in place actually continuously um, fight, struggle to be cost effective. And I think you can really appreciate this too, Ash, coming from technology, how important it is to actually really invest in having those great processes and, you know, using technology because it's out there to help us improve back office processes and, yeah. Thank you. Mark stole my thunder. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Jade. That's sorry. Okay. No, look, take it as a compliment. Take it that I actually agree with what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I might vary that a little bit then. Um, I, I would say the one thing is to have a very, a very well defined strategic vision and very clear understanding of your what your ideal clients look like and what your service proposition is and what value you bring to them. Because ultimately, um, it's the value that draws the clients to your practice. And if if that's not clear for your staff, how are they going to communicate that to the clients that they see? So have a very well-defined strategic vision for the business. You explained it far better than me, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> explained it far better and a lot simpler as well. Well done. Oh, you did it quite eloquently, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mark or Stubber. Can't believe I've called you Mark the whole podcast. Uh, I think no one calls you Mark. That's all right, mate. As I said a little bit earlier, Ash, I think people sort of forget what my the Christian name is and they go, what is this Christian name? Anyway, <laughs> come on. <laughs> all right, Stubber, uh, Jaden Kammer, absolute pleasure. Um, to have you on the AFA Genetics podcast and thank you so much for your valuable insights. We hope that you've enjoyed the amazing insight from our guest. A huge shout out to Stubber, Jade and Kamel for sharing their stories. Thanks again to the AFA and Advice Intelligence. See you soon.